Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 12 where we try to help you to finish in the top 5% globally. The way we do that is we have a small pool of players rather than all the players in the FPL system. And then from that pool you should better pick any combination and you'll do alright. Now when we go through the players later on in the video they all appear on a card that most of them have got a white background but some have a different colour background. The different colours mean different things. I'm going to show you what they mean now. So most of the players are white, but the ones that are not, if it's yellow, it means it's a new player for this game week, new for the system. Green is a good buy. So if you're wild carding or you want to do transfers, buying yellow or green players should be perfectly fine. Grey is a bench fodder player. They spend most of the time on your bench. The reason we've got them by and large is so that it releases more money for your main 11 players. Try not to have more than three grey players at a maximum but if you want fewer, that's fine. A blue player means we're going to sell them soon or they're going to be sellable soon. So if you're wild carding, you probably don't want to buy a player that's blue because we want to get rid of them soon. Orange is sellable now. And for each orange player, I'll try and explain why they're sellable and you may or may not want to sell them. A red player, get rid of them, sometimes even for a hit and replace them with someone better. So if you're wild carding, you want to buy the yellow and green players and then any white players you want and avoid the blue, orange and reds. And you can throw in a couple of greys. If you just want to freshen your team up or you've got lots of flagged players, again, try and go for the yellow and green. Sometimes you need to get a grey or a white. We'll just see how it goes. Hopefully it'll all make sense when we're in there. And now to look how Game Week 11 went and what our plans could be for Game Week 12. So as you probably noticed, Game Week 11 was a very low scoring game week for nearly all teams. So let's look at how the players did in the system. For the goalkeepers, they didn't do too badly. They'd have got you an average of 3.7. For the defenders, not very good at all. Trippier got 9. And of the expensive defenders, no one else did anything else. The cheaper defenders, Akanji got a very lucky goal. <laughs> he didn't know anything about it, just went in off his backside basically. Anderson got 5. So for this lot, assuming there were 2, that's an average of 4.8 points. And then the cheapest defenders, LaSalle we introduced last week, he got 9 points. For the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, it was only Fernandes who scored any points, and that was an extra time. So if you had two of these randomly, you could have got 7.2 points. The second page of midfielders, they did slightly better, or a fair bit better. Random two of these, you would have averaged 9.4 points. And then the very cheap midfielders, Palmer got 12 now the Chelsea Tottenham game was exceptional because Tottenham were down to nine men and Chelsea needed that in order to win. So it went to show attacking wise how poor Chelsea really are and how well Tottenham are doing. But anyway, that's an average of nine points. For the forwards, the expensive forwards did absolutely nothing. So they averaged 1.8. And for the cheaper forwards, Archer got nine, but that's all. And the chances are he was on your bench anyway. So these average 2.8 between them. The global average score for game week 11, I wrote it down here, was 32 points. And assuming you picked a 4-4-2 formation, the minimum score you would have got of the system was 8 for this game week. The average was 37, which is nice, it's above the global average, and you could have actually got 72 points. Now I did look at a number of teams that are using this system, and most of them actually scored below the average. To be fair, that was largely because, well, they chose Haaland as captain, which was tactically the right thing to do. But also the global average will include a few million teams that have already given up and don't play. And they will have players in that randomly happen to do well. For example, they will have Jackson, who did well. A lot of them have Ferdinand, Fernandez, rather, who did well. So the global average is actually higher than it than the average, I suspect, of managers who are actually engaged in playing the system. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> Maybe I'm just trying to make excuses. So for the goalkeepers going forward, Pope at five and a half million. He's solid. If you've got enough money, he's a very good keeper to buy. Edison's the same price, but of these two, I'd rather have Pope. Onana, this game week is particularly nice, home to Luton. And it may be that United have started to turn the corner. Maybe too early to tell. I wouldn't be scared about having Onana this week. I wouldn't be buying him in. If I was on a wild card, I wouldn't be buying a Nana. But if I had him, I'd be comfortable with that at the moment. 
Johnston for Palace seems to be a good keeper. No one's got more clean sheets than uh, Palace this season so far. And the upcoming four fixtures, they could get another four clean sheets. Of course, they could get none. But home to Everton and Bournemouth, away to Luton. West Ham, I guess, is the most tricky one. But he's a good keeper. If you're wildcarding, Johnston, I'd say, is worth having. Flecken, now he went off injured. He's currently, I think, got a yellow flag. Reasonable chance of being back in time. But he does blank in game week 19. That's a fair distance away yet. Pickford 4.4. Everton have been improving. Ariola 4.3. West Ham are a bit hot and cold. Turner. Now, he it was always the case that he may get dropped by Forrest. He didn't play last game week. He may get some more games, but he is definitely sellable now. You don't have to sell him. But if you've got Flecken and Turner, you'll probably need to deal with your goalkeepers before game week 19. Otherwise, you may have no keeper. The expensive defenders. Trent is very, very good. If you can afford him, he's great to have. I've not made him green simply because money is quite hard to come by and he is 7.9 million. But I would be fine to own him if I had the money. As it happens, I don't own him. Trippier is green. Consistently get points, even in difficult games. Absolutely worth having. White. I've got him as white, not green. The reason being, although Arsenal have some very good fixtures coming up, Saliba is possibly just as good for points or nearly as good. And he's half a million cheaper. So if you're going to get one Arsenal defender, Saliba would be a better one to get than white. Cash, I've made blue. He's flagged as yellow. He's at home to Fulham this week. So that's a good game. But then he's away to Tottenham, away to Bournemouth, home to Man City. So... A lot of us would be offloading cash maybe next week we've got him. If you want to sell him this week, that's okay too. Certainly if you've not got very good bench and you have to rely on your bench, then you probably do want to sell cash this week. But if you've got good players on your bench, you could hold on to him. But if you're wildcarding, I'd say it's not worth getting cash in. Pedro Poro, he's interesting. So Tottenham have currently lost quite a lot of players through suspension or injury. And although Pedro Poro is a very good player, we're not sure how the rest of the uh, Spurs defence are going to be lining up, how well they're going to be performing. So he may be scoring slightly below what he should be scoring for the next few game weeks until the defence is settled again. That said, I've got Poro. I'm not looking to offload him. I probably wouldn't bring him in, though, if I was wildcarding now. Regarding the slightly cheaper defenders, Anderson, it's worth having a Palace player. I think at the moment they're quite good for clean sheets as a Palace defensive player. But if you've got Johnston, there's no need to get Anderson, but you can if you like. Estupin, now I was hoping he might be back, at least coming on maybe for last game week. He's probably not going to be playing this game week and we still don't know when he's going to be back. And he's coming toward the end of his good fixtures. So he's definitely sellable, but you don't need to sell him. But he's probably going to be missing Sheffield United at home this game week, which is very unfortunate. Uh, if you've got enough coverage and you're not wildcarding, it's probably okay to keep him. But if you've got two free transfers, you may want to get rid of him. A candy I've made orange because it's so hard to know which Man City defenders are going to be playing each week. And they're now playing Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham and way to Aston Villa. It's quite conceivable they're going to get no clean sheets anyway. And he very rarely is going to score a goal. Last week was exceptional circumstances. Gabriel, Arsenal have some good fixtures coming up, but he's so far, I think, missed three games of the ten. Maybe it's four. Three or four games he's missed so far. So he is a minute's risk. So if he's the only Arsenal defender you can afford, it's OK to get him. You might do well. If you can afford to stretch to Saliba, Saliba's a better choice. Udogi, <laughs> he, got, he got a big minus this week. He got sent off. He's missing the next game week, which is away to Wolves. Then they got Villa, Man City, West Ham. It's absolutely fine to sell him. He is absolutely sellable, I'd say now. Burn, he's out injured for a long time. If you got him, get rid of him. Cheaper defenders. Simicast didn't start, which is unfortunate. So he's, way well, I think he was green last week. I'm a bit more nervous about him now because we don't know if he's going to play. If we knew he was going to be playing 90 minutes every week, I'd say he's absolutely worth having. But we don't know that for sure. 
but equally it's not worth offloading them not making them orange we need to see how the next two or three weeks go i think colwell cheap 4.6 he'll be sitting on your bench if you got him but in a few week, game weeks time chelsea's fixtures do pick up pinnock 4.5 next two game fixtures are difficult but after that they've got some nice fixtures so Maguire, he's a new entry. He's normally going to be grey, which means he's kind of bench fodder territory. But as I said earlier, Man United do seem to be improving. They're at home to Luton. Reasonably good chance of a clean sheet there. Away to Everton may get a clean sheet. He's played 90 minutes of the last four games. So he does seem to be getting game time now. So if you're wild carding, I kind of think he's probably all right to get in. Or if you want to get rid of, for example, your doggy and just free up a little bit of money, you could get Maguire. He may turn out to be disastrous. So there's a bit of a risk with him. But at only 4.2, we can just bang him on the bench. And then Lasalle, bench fodder. Perfectly good. He should be playing probably 90 minutes the next few game weeks. Um, but he's a nice cheap player. Regarding the midfielders, Salah have made green. He's still getting points most game weeks. As is Son, Saka. Those three are all very good midfielders to own. But it's very hard to own these three and Haaland, and Trippier, and have the rest of your players being okay. But if you can manage to get two or three of these into your squad, that's very good. I'm aware Saka's not done anything the last couple of game weeks, but I don't think we need to be too frightened of that. And they're at home to Burnley this week, away to Brentford, home to Wolves, away to Luton. Arsenal do have a very nice run in. Rashford didn't play last game week, bit of a party boy. At home to Luton this week, if he played, he could get some decent points. I definitely wouldn't be bringing him in, but you don't have to sell him if you got him. But if you wanted to swap him for Saka, for example, you could do. If you've got Rashford, if he does nothing this game week, then I think definitely be tempted to move him on. Odegaard, injury doubt, but he may he may be all right. We don't know for sure how he is. Fernandez, I'm quite tempted to get him in, but he's on four yellow cards. So one more and he's going to be missing a, a game week. I do actually quite like Fernandez, but arguably there are better midfielders at the moment in the game. And then Madison, he's currently flagged as an injury doubt. We don't know if he's going to be playing or not. I've currently got him. Probably going to be keeping him unless I hear he's almost certainly not playing, but I've honestly not decided yet. Regarding the cheaper players of midfielders, Martinelli should be a good buy. Arsenal got some nice fixtures. Bowen, West Ham have some nice fixtures. So Foden's not green because Man City don't have nice fixtures coming up. His minutes aren't guaranteed, but he has been quite good for minutes this season so far. Sterling, I did think about making him sellable, but after the next two game weeks, Chelsea's fixtures do pick up. He is only 6.9 million. Chelsea only need to improve a little bit and Sterling's going to be a very good player to have. Diaby's worth keeping at the moment. Embremo... He'll be a very good pick in a couple of weeks' time, but he's away to Liverpool, home to Arsenal, so the next two game weeks aren't great. Mitama, home to Sheffield United. Now, he's been playing a lot because he's also been playing in European games for Brighton, but if he gets to play 90 minutes, or even 60 minutes at the weekend, he could definitely do some damage against Sheffield United. So I think he's a good player to have. But I've not made him green because... Brighton haven't been as good as maybe I was hoping they would be. But he's certainly a very, very good player to have. The cheaper midfielder, Ward Prowse, not making him sellable yet. We always knew he'd have a lot of quiet weeks. But every now and then, he will get something. And he is 6.2. He's the most expensive midfielder I think we've got that isn't, strictly speaking, a grey. Gordon, he would be grey as in a bench fodder. But he's 5.7. He is very attacking. He's not in my squad. He's got, I think, six yellow cards so far. So he does pick up his yellow cards. And look, he's a yellow card now. He does get lots of bookings. But he is popular. He is going to probably get lots of goals and assists. But some game weeks, he might get you a zero or even a minus one. So he's a bit of a risk, but he is nice and cheap. And if you need to spread some money around, he's a very good player to get. Gibbs White, bench fodder. Neto have made orange because it looks like he could be back in a week or two. That's when he's expected to be back. So if you've still got Neto, the Wolves midfielder that is, it's all right to keep hold of him if you've got enough other players that are doing okay. If you want to move him on, that's fine as well. But you don't have to. 
Casimiro is out for a while if you've got him, get rid of him. Palmer, I've made him gravy because he's cheap, but in a couple of game weeks' time, we'll probably be playing him every week if you've got him. He's a good player to have. Guarding the forwards, Haaland is still green. Wherever he plays, as long as he's fit, he's got a chance of getting some good returns. Watkins, so Villa have got home to Fulham this week, then away to Tottenham, away to Bournemouth. Their fixtures will be turning slightly, so he's worth having this week. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't bring him in on a transfer. If I was wildcarding, would I get him? I'm not sure I'd get him if I was wildcarding. I'd probably make sure I had Haaland and then use the Watkins funds elsewhere. But I've still got Watkins. I'm not intending to get rid of him at the moment. He's certainly a good player. Wilson, he keeps seeming to get injured, getting little knocks. But also, he keeps playing some minutes, he keeps getting some points. So he's a perfectly good, good player to have, it seems. Jesus may be back for the next game week, which is after an international break. But we don't know yet. So almost certainly going to be missing Burnley. Brentford, we don't know. Then then Wolves and then Luton. So if you've got Jesus, you could hold on to him if you've got other things to sort out. If you've got nothing else to do, you may want to sell Jesus with the idea that you may want to get him back in a couple of game week time. Darwin, I've made green because he's very attacking. Liverpool got some nice fixtures. Alvarez, Man City, bad fixtures or not great fixtures. Now, Hoyland, I originally had him and I wanted him for this game week. I ended up selling him which was a mistake as it happened. He's at home to Luton this week, but if he does nothing this game week, then it'd be worth getting rid of him, I think. But he's all right to hold, but I wouldn't be buying him in this game week. Regarding the cheaper forwards, just got Solanke, Vissa, Enketi, a new entry. Now he's a risk in as much as when Jesus is back, he's not going to be first choice. And at the time of recording, He's apparently maybe got a bit of a knock. He's missed some training sessions. So we don't even know for sure he's going to be playing this weekend, which would be a shame. But if he does play home to Burnley, he could well get a lot of points. So if you get Enketia in, he's just about cheap enough to end up on your bench sometimes without it being an issue. Or you, it might be you're going to have to move him on in a couple of weeks because you need the money. So he's a short-term option probably. But if we hear that Jesus would be out for longer than expected, and then Ketty is a very good buy. So I absolutely wouldn't be messing my team up to get Enketia in. But if you're wild carding and you can get enough good players, he's an alright punt. Uh, Morris, bench fodder, Gio Pedro, Adibayo, Archer or bench fodder. Now Gio Pedro is at home to Sheffield United this game week. He may well start. Depends what happens in Europe. If he does, he's got a good chance of getting some good points. On the other hand, he may come on for the last 20 minutes and do nothing. So if he was playing 90 minutes, he would be green. He rarely plays 90 minutes, so he's a gamble. But he's all right for bench fodder. So regarding the bench order, if we get the bench order right, the other 11 players sort themselves out. With the bench order and the captaincy, these are my suggestions. If you don't know what to do, you want a bit of guidance... This is my opinion. If you want to do your own thing, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to show you the goalkeepers from worst to best, in my opinion, for this game week. So the first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. So if you have Flecken away to Liverpool, I suggest he's on your bench. If you don't have him, but you have Turner, he's on your bench. Now the chances are Turner's not even going to play. But if you have Turner and Flecken, I'd play Turner just in case he plays because he's playing West Ham. Slightly better chance of a clean sheet. I'd say them flecking against Liverpool. Then I've got Pickford away to Palace. Edison away to Chelsea. Because Man City always seem to manage to find a way to let one goal in. So that's why he's there. Ariel are at home to Forest. Then Pope away to Bournemouth. But if I had Pope and Ariola, I would probably play Pope. Because I think the Newcastle defence is that much better, even though they're away. Then I've got Johnson at home to Palace. And then I've got Onana at home to Luton. It's my suggested order for the keepers. For the rest of the players, just looking for my glasses, they're not in here. So the rest of the players, the first player you see that you've got, I'm suggesting you put in position three on your bench. The next player you see you've got, position two. The last player you see you've got, position one. There are four rows of players here. And once we get to the last couple of rows, especially the last row, which would be at the top, 
there are some very good players in there. And if you're having to bench one of those, that's very unfortunate. I'm not showing all the players. If I'm not showing a player, it's because they're either sold or they're injured and they're not playing or else it means you're playing them. So I'm suggesting you go Adebayo for Luton. He's on your bench. And then it's Nakamba for Luton, Colwell, Pinnock, Gibbs, White, Archer, Morris, Vissa, Solanke. And when I'm sorting out the bench order, I am taking into account the form, if it's home or away, by personal biases, according to what players are on the other side, what I think is going to happen. So a lot of thought does go into this. It's not just random. And then we've got Akanji, Pedro Porro, Simicas, Maguire, Sterling, Palmer, Embremo, Jao Pedro and Ward-Prowse. So Simicas is all the way down there, even though Liverpool have got a, quite a nice home fixture because he is a minutes risk. What if he comes on just for 30 minutes? What if they're taking off for 55? So Liverpool may get a clean sheet and Simicast may play, but he may not play 60 minutes, which means he doesn't get the clean sheet points. And I've got Maguire low-ish because Man United can be disappointing. So he's he's a bit of a funny one, but hopefully you've already got three players that I've shown you. If not, let's go to the next row. Lascelles, Anderson, Hoyland, Cash, Gordon, Alvarez, Foden, Wilson, Gabriel. You can see we're getting good players now. Saliba, White, Madison. Now I'm hoping if Madison's injured, he won't play at all. I don't really want him coming on for just 10 minutes at the end or 20 minutes. So I'm hoping Madison is 90 minutes or 80 minutes or else nothing. Enketia, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Diaby, Bowen, Martinelli, Darwin. And if you're having to put Darwin on your bench, that means you've got 10 very good outfield players, I'd say. Regarding captaincy, possibly Salah. That's who I'm going to be putting the old mule hat on. But there are actually six good captain choices I've put up here this week. Haaland, he's good anywhere. He may well be the most captain. He's perfectly fine to wear the old mule hat. Saka, two, okay, the last two weeks have been disappointing for him, but he's at home to Burnley. He may well, get, may well get a lot of points. Fernandez, we're getting on a bit risky now, but he's got a nice home game. Watkins has a nice home game. Son seems to be good anywhere and he's going away to Wolves. So if you can, I'd suggest you make one of these your captain and one of these your vice captain. I'm going with Salah, but I don't have Haaland. If I had Salah and Haaland, I don't know who I'd go with. I would possibly go with Salah, but it's actually quite a difficult call. But any of those are fine for captain, any are fine for vice captain. And if you've only got one of these or no of these, none of these, no of these, none of these, then go for one of the players that was green earlier on. And in case you're wondering about the background picture, last game week was like there's a bunch of clowns playing in the Premiership. We just, none of the main players were getting any points. And it, it was actually very funny. It would have been frightening if you'd captained Haaland because they played early on and then no points, for, well, one point for him. And then you had the fear of all those that captained Salah and Son and Watkins, but they all blanked as well. So there we have it. That's their plans for game week 12, what I'm suggesting for the system. Hopefully you're doing all right. Although it was a low scoring week, that's fine because it was low scoring for lots of managers. And if you got below average, you probably got a small red arrow, not a stinking big red arrow. If you got a green arrow, big well done. Thank you very much for watching and let's hope game week 12 is much better for all of us than it was the game week 11. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>